Hello and welcome to Geraldo's very first book review. Uh, this is no any book, this is a very special book. It's called The Devil's Cradle and it's, it is, as the cover says, the story of Finnish black metal made by the author uh, Tero Ikäheimonen. Now this book was originally released in Finnish about a year ago called Pirun Kehto, which is basically this very straight translation or the other way around. This is being a very straight translation of the Finnish book. Now, um, this is a quite thick book, quite big and heavy tome actually. It is over 550 pages of Finnish black metal. Uh, the history goes from late 80s to all the way to current year we're living in 2017 and uh, it's very much the story about the bands the scene um, the releases and the whole thing around black metal bands be it about uh, straight you know devil worship to satanism or more secular approach about black metal but it's 100 percent full black metal and now, to me, or to review this book is a, a little bit kind of weird because I'm also featured myself in the book as a, in a few opinions. Not because I have played and still play in a band. Uh, my bands are not that big to be included in this kind of tone, and that's so totally okay. But because of my long uh, history of uh, with reviews and gig reviews and album reviews regarding black metal. Not only black metal, but in this case, that is the stuff. But nevertheless, it's not like there's many stories about me, so I guess I'm not biased to actually go through this one. Uh, this one is released by SWAT Records Finland, which is very known for their very good and yet very varied releases. They have lots of stuff, not just only metal, as you know, not just only black metal, when it comes to metal, but very many uh, different type of genres of music. But what they do, they do it with class, and this makes no exception. This is a, a really beautiful, as you can see, there's this kind of a uh, nice cover, which is kind of like this, uh, I don't know actually what the word is, but the, you know, it's not just, you know, kind of printed, it's it also feels nice, it feels precious. But let's take a look. So, this tone, I try to show it to you here. Basically, the content list uh, tells you a lot about uh, the book itself. As you can see, it's uh, divided into uh, different chapters. I'm trying to peek here so I can, you know, point the fingers in the right places. So, first we have the opening. Oh, now the zoom is screwing me over. Bear with me and the, the zoom. Uh, so, here we have uh, uh, the opening chords, which goes basically through the first steps of history. And it basically goes in, uh, you know, chronological order. So, we have Bear it. Uh, Imbel, Nazarene, Barnathrum, Archgoat, and then we have uh, a few others interviewed here as well, like a couple of brothers who were very much into tape trading and um, all that stuff early in the 90s and maybe late 80s when they kind of started. So it's not only just each mini chapter, but you know, focusing on the band, but also uh, about the people, other people involved in the black metal scene of Finland. So it's kind of a, kind of going in in a order which makes sense. So these are the very first parts, and they're given in a very good way. A lot of pages. So for example, Beherit uh, chapter is way longer than some of the one's coming up later on, which totally makes sense. Really interesting stuff to read, by the way. So, uh, then we go to this kind of a second main chapter called Explosion, which also continues from the 
early 90s, there's Azazel, uh, Black Metal Crimes, Diaboli, Darkwood, My Betrothed, Horna, Vornat, Thai Serpent, Urn, and uh, Mustasurma, and other bands, Bla uh, Black Dawn, Algazand, and Oceans. Azag Hall, and then going on to Warlock, Behex, and Clandestine Blade, Satanic Warmaster, Right for Revenge, Anal Blasphemy, which is by the way a kind of a new uh, chapter versus the Finnish version. Also, we have a chapter called about Tika Tika Studios and the main man of the Kortelainen, uh, where for example in Bill Nazarene made their you know, uh, most important albums. Then we have Goat Moon, uh, Finnish National Socialist, Black Metal. Uh, the last part, Gnosis, we have Icy Rex, and we there's a text about uh, you know uh, the Star of Azazel organization, Charnel Winds, Cosmic Church, Saturnian Mist, and then finally Epilogue. Uh, so newer bands and the kind of a middle part bands, and then the ones that actually took the first steps in the whole genre. Now, like I said, these uh, chap chapters based on bands and uh, other phenomena are kind of varied in their length. Some of them are totally deserving a longer kind of parts. So, for example, Beherit is already taking something like uh, more than 40 pages alone, which is quite nice. And I'm gonna soon show you some uh, images and pictures so you can get the idea how this actually looks inside. Then, for example, Impel Nazarene also takes almost another 50 pages, 40 plus anyway. And uh, then it kind of, you know, shortens when we go further. They're like, uh, some are like 10, 12, 20 pages long and so forth. But towards the end, it kind of, shortens a lot. For example, about Charnel Winds, it's about 16 pages. Uh, Cosmic Church, some 16 pages. And this length kind of goes hand in hand uh, with the history of the band and the kind of like meaningfulness of the band. Now, I don't fully agree uh, with all the bands here in question. Some of these bands are kind of like weird picks, but I guess the author actually uh, has very good reasoning why to pick up certain bands. And I know for a fact, because when I got my own finished copy of the book a year ago, I had a talk with many of my friends related to black metal, be it musicians or, you know, just an active kind of underground participants or label guys or whatever. Uh, I know that many guys don't quite understand why certain bands are here included or why they have so much, you know, space and pages involved with and why certain bands are missing. Now, these are all kind of a subject that are, you know, very much up for debate. Why some band isn't there? Was it because they didn't, you know, actually uh, reply to the uh, letters or emails or whatever, from the author, or were they just, you know, left out because they didn't, you know, had such an important part. Now, there are some loose chapters, in my opinion, which could have been way shorter, especially given the importance of those bands in the past and, you know, what kind of chat is going on with these interviews. Then again, there are also, you know, uh, long chapters which could have been even longer because there is so much stuff to be going through. For example, Behrit, even though it's uh, more than 40 pages long, it still kind of, you know, uh, feels like it could have been more. And this coming from a guy who isn't exactly the biggest Behrit fan there is. So it's not like I'm talking as a fanboy, but as a kind of a... A person who is curious about all this, these bands, how they achieved what they did, uh, what were their like uh, motives and thoughts, and uh, what kind of ideas were running in their brain uh, when they, you know, decided to do what they did. So anyway, 
there's a lots of stuff and it you know varies from band to band you know which kind of uh, tone there is and there are tragic stories for sure there are deaths and it kind of belongs very well in this kind of book but this is not about you know getting so much about drama about you know personal experiences it, it is kind of a documentation about how things unfolded and why they did you know go that way in the first place so all in all this is exceptionally good book and uh, I know I'm not only one you know saying that some has read uh, some sites uh, have rated this like in a very very good way and I must totally agree I think this is a definite five star uh, uh, book uh, about black metal bands even though there are lots of friends actually uh, included in this kind of this documentation it was really uh, fun to read about the people and bands I've known for you know decades basically but then again, there are lots of uh, anecdotes and cool stuff. I had no idea what was going on. I learned a lot, of course, which was very rewarding as a reading experience. I mean, after all, this is 550 something pages. So if you would just, you know, if it would be just, you know, copying some interviews from the past and it would be just, you know, uh, listing the same things all over again, it would be kind of dull so while there are actual like quotes from previous interviews they just are more like details here and there and i think uh, mr tero ikahemonen has done a wonderful job interviewing these bands and putting all the contents together because it kind of uh, approaches you know from where this and that band kind of started and how it advanced from that very point to where they are now or where they kind of quit or whatever is the story of the band and there are comments from other people as well so for example if we take a look at the arch goat chapter for example there are also other people commenting about what was going on and i remember this particularly well because there was also i got asked about what was going on in Turku, uh, the, the hometown of myself, as well as the band. So, for example, um, I got asked, like, so what was going on in Turku, you know, when, when Archgoat was kind of gone for more than a decade. So, that's just an, an example how this book is basically laid together, you know. There are comments from not only from the bands, but you know, uh, label guys and other longtime uh, kind of scene members, if you will, you know, saying kind of a other views and opinions about how it goes. But let's take a look uh, at this band. So as you can pretty much figure out, it's all black and white. So there are lots of old photos from, for example, this very image and these some of these are all kind of like zeros copied stuff we have also uh nice old flyers and uh well flyers <laughs> and sign uh things uh, album covers and rare pictures of these these bands so you know there might be these kind of uh, uh, parts from the uh, other signs from like Slayer sign number nine and these are the kind of uh, quotes uh, about the bands and all that stuff so all in all, in all I'll try to give you a little bit of a look here so you can, you can pretty much see it's very nicely laid out and when there's when the band chapter begins there is also always a bigger one there is also uh, quotes uh, there is also map and you can see from there like uh, in which part of the country uh, the band is you know coming for so it's a oh, oh man it's so difficult but as you can see lots of uh, lots of text also lots of uh, nice 
images so all these bands are nicely featured basically lots of stuff even a die-hard underground fan who already knows everything there is to know i can pretty much guarantee that nobody knows all these bands inside out uh, that is of course a matter of opinion uh, whether you are interested in all of these bands or not but i think that whether you're an old schooler whether you're a new guy uh, this book actually can tell you many great and interesting stories about finnish black metal uh, bands and the people involved you know whether it's about uh, doing a fanzine or running a label or just being kind of a active uh, person in the scene and uh, to kind of make this worthwhile as a um, kind of a documentation for except, uh, example take, let's take a look on the last pages all these names of bands and people in question are listed here so you can pretty much easily just you know check out certain like bands like if i if you want to know about this and that so you can just you know check out the uh, name from the index page and you know pick up all the necessary information where it's located in and in which context so to conclude my overly uh, lengthy uh, review i totally recommend this one to anybody who has any interest in black metal when it comes to finland finnish black metal this is kind of a finnish black metal bible as sick as this may sound so if you are into the genre and if you like finnish black metal get this one for yourself or for your friend as a present i can guarantee you won't be disappointed and uh, as you can see it's also nice looking it's not cheap paperback but hardcover book so totally wonderful masterpiece thank you for watching if you have opinions comments feelings disagreements about this book or my review here feel free to uh, leave on the comment box below as usual more stuff coming for you until then rauta out